AI is changing in a major way and I want to share with you how. So yesterday I made a video about a 3D tool and completely misunderstood its purpose. But my amazing community corrected me that actually this AI is not creating 3D models. Instead, it's using pre-existing 3D models and then adjusting the sliders to give you what you want. So the AI is basically your assistant, but that also is a major paradigm shift and we have seen multiple examples of this arise over the recent weeks. So let me go deeper into this. Let's start this journey by acknowledging that simple text prompts are not enough. While AI has made major progress in understanding our intent through language and we have learned to define the prompts in a way that guide the AI, relying simply on language is limiting our creative potential. So what you often get is a really beautiful result, but at the same time, a lot of randomness and a lot of elements that are not defined by you, but chosen by the AI. So we need more tools to collaborate with the AI. One thing that all of these tools like the control nets, the LoRa's, the negative embeddings have in common is that they are an add on to the AI that we use to control the output. But that still leaves the AI as the main actor for our input. Now the way the landscape is changing and how we see new tools emerging over the last weeks is redefining the role of the AI. The essence of the change in this collaboration between artist and AI is mainly about giving the artist back control over the artistic process, but also making the artist the main actor in the process. And this is happening in two ways. One example here is Photoshop, where instead of like with Automatic 1111, we have Photopia as a side tool, but AI is still the main actor. Now with Photoshop, we have a tool that is built specifically for us that gives us full control over the artistic process while the AI is a sidekick that only comes in when we need its assistance and when we want to use its powers. But the focus is here on the artist and the artist's control over the process. So you are starting with your idea, you're preparing your idea in the software, the AI comes in to help you refine and also improve the results. And then you are again finishing it up by refining that result again yourself with full control with these tools. Now, the second part here brings us back to Tuffy AI, because here what we are seeing is that the input is predefined. And this is removed from what, for example, ControlNet or LoRa's is doing, because here you have a finished model that you are using to work on with the AI. So this, for example, can be used for rapid prototyping where you can just create a lot of ideas. But at the same time, you can be sure that it will always be about that model. This gives you a lot of control and repeatability in the process. And also, of course, that means a lot of consistency. Because, for example, if you have this predefined 3D model and the AI is just adjusting the parameters, you know that this model is always going to be the same model. But why would you want to limit the power of AI and give it only partial control over your project? And also, why would you want to go back again into all of these complex tools to prepare the artistic process and then afterwards refine the output of the AI? Well, on the artist side, a very important part here is that you have fine control over the elements that you're creating, but also that you can rely on the output and the consistency of the output. Let's, for example, say you have created a character in a very nice outfit that is standing in a doorway. But now you want to create the exact same character with the exact same outfit, but sitting on a chair, even with control and the Loras, this is not possible because you don't actually have control over what is happening in that image. You only have rough and precise controls for now. Also on the consumer side, when we, for example, think about a video game, 
you want to have control over the range of what an AI in that game actually can do. So, for example, when the player interacts with the barkeeper, you don't want the AI to be able to say all kinds of things and talk about all kinds of topics as an NPC. And you don't want this NPC to do all kinds of possible actions because this will break the immersion and it will not fit with the artistic vision you have for your video game. And of course, it can create very awkward situations that will give you a lot of bad press about your game. So that's a kind of situation you probably want to avoid. But where does this leave us with our dream of the powerful AI where we just say an idea and it creates a two hour movie for us and we just sit down with popcorn and enjoy that movie? Well, that is still possible. But as you know, right now, when, for example, you want to have an image of Peter Quill from the Guardians of the Galaxy, you get all kinds of different looking characters with all kinds of strange outfits, but it's never precisely that character with all of the little details. Now, in comparison to that, wouldn't you rather have, for example, a set that is, let's say, provided by Disney that is consistent with the lore, with the universe, with the characters, with the philosophy. And inside of that, you can tell the AI to create a story for you where you say, well, make me a 30 minute episode that gives me more insight into the love story between Gamora and Peter Quill. I just want to see more about that backstory. And this is actually consistent with everything in there. And these actually look like the characters and follows the lore of the stories you love and enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.